Good morning, everyone. And today we're going to talk about how can AI best support small medium enterprises. Of course, I've been already being introduced, and as we said, um, actually, the chief product marketing officer at Strands. So, let us first understand, but very quickly, who Strands really is. Uh, we actually, as Strands, we actually have been keen in uh, defining algorithms that actually uh, first were used to serve the uh, music industry. In fact, we have been then also developing an algorithm that was then sold to Apple in early 2011. We then have been developing uh, financial uh, sector innovation uh, across, uh, first of all, of course, PFM solution. And of course, then our journey has started and has led us today uh, here where we are, but of course, through the acquisition made by Crit. Uh, roughly two years ago. As you can see from our uh, map here, our commercial presence is pretty wide. We actually cover, I would say, pretty uh, wide landscape at a global scale. So let us try to understand a bit in the practical use cases what actually AI really is for small medium enterprises. So I'm going to make really four key examples that can really clarify this topic. First of all, imagine that AI can support the decision in efficiency. Imagine a chain of stores or two, three stores that actually need to understand when to open or reopen stores just by looking at how the cash flow is actually doing. So by having uh, cash flow insights analysis, pivoted with market insights. The second example is, imagine that we could also support different strategies implementation. So pricing strategies. So imagine that we could just decide when to increase our pricing, just looking at the seasonality effects by looking at the recurrent patterns we can see in our revenues. Or imagine that we could also try to uh, look at our environmental impact as a small business customer. So meaning by looking at our transactions, we could also be able to understand what's the impact of the single small business on actually uh, the, the environment. Or imagine that uh, we could have uh, a working capital analysis, meaning looking at our invoicing cycle, we could understand when we're going to be, get be paid late, when we're going to have a need of cash. So we could be suggested to get invoicing discounting in order to, to avoid this liquidity need. These are the examples where I think it's pretty much obvious that AI has a, a practical implication in the small business life by really solving clear needs the AI has, the, sorry, the small business has, and that AI as a tool can solve. In order to, to, to get then at the end of the presentation how it really works, let us first understand what actually is really driving AI and uh, why it's actually the time is now. We think there are four key drivers that actually are affecting the adoption of AI by small business enterprises. Small business behavior is changing. Cloud and API are a key driver. New offerings are arising across the market, and as was already said pre previous to me today, data is at the heart of everything. Very quick, why behavior is changing? I think there are four key reasons. The first one is digital adoption is dramatically increasing, uh, and in particular on the mobile channels. Post-COVID, we actually see that after COVID, uh, there is a much more intense need from the small business customer to always keep an eye on the cash flow generation. So to, to, to have always hands on on what's really happening in my finances. Multi-banking, there's always more and more the opportunistic approach from the banking customers in uh, um, opening new bank accounts in order to uh, op get new credit lines to manage liquidities. New entrepreneurs is the last driver. We have to consider that uh, the time is passing and the new generation of new businesses 
is arising. Consider that 70% uh, of the new business now is made by millennials. These guys have always more and more uh, digital banking needs, pure digital banking needs. So it means they're going to look at the digital first product. The second factor we said is uh, cloud, basically. We see that left side of the slide, I mean, very simple. The traditional model was that everybody, every everything was in the, all the technology was in the legacy of the institution. So innovation had to come in-house and the, the clients could consume the services only through the proprietary channels. Cloud and open banking have pushed actually this paradigm into the next level, meaning thanks to more or less API technology and cloud, now customers can access uh, the, the service of the, the, their institution, not only through the proprietary channel of that institution, but also through other channels, because things can now more easily be integrated into other channels. New service model. We said that actually there are new propositions in the market that are pretty much fast arising. Uh, so also the way the market is trying to uh, serve the small business sector is changing. Here are some really examples that we see across the market. Of course, we see challenger banks, we see fintechs, we see traditional banks that are actually traditional commercial banks are evolving their business model. Uh, this is actually the, the, the key example. I think the market is pretty much uh, evolving. And the last driver, as we said, is the data. The data is at the heart of everything. The massive change we are seeing in these last years is that data is getting um, always more and more digital and there are new sources of data uprising. Of course, the first thing is e-invoices. The rise of e-invoices across Europe is, of course, having an enormous impact because the data that is getting digital is uh, dramatically increasing. Transactions that are typically held by banks can now be accessed via open API thanks to PSD2, also by uh, TPPs, by authorized third parties. Emissions, meaning carbon emissions. This is something that is actually arising now, the, the so-called car carbon footprint score analysis, ESG. Also new ESG data are getting digital. So collection of questionnaires and of those data are getting digital and are new source of data that can be leveraged. Payments, well, of course, uh, having payments, new forms of payment arising and also this being accessed by a third party institution, the open API are uh, an, another source of course of change. Of course, there are not only these data that we can leverage, but there are also other sources of data and new sources that will likely come into the next future. So how can all of these data be used? I mean, the funnel is very, very simple. I'm not now going to get technical, but how can it be really used? Everything starts from a bottom of the, 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 the funnel, where we actually see that uh, everything starts from aggregation. So aggregating data is the first source, uh, the first step we have to do. The second thing is, okay, once we have aggregated the source of data, we have to enrich that information in order to make it available, easy to read, easy to consume. And this is where actually AI comes into place. By applying machine learning principles, the idea is to read that information we have enriched, so to trigger insights to the end user or to the bank, so to consume it. In the end, it's always about getting raw data being uh, easy to read for an external user that has not to be a data scientist the end, a data scientist in the end. The data scientist is going to, let me say, act in the middle of this funnel. But the two users, uh, meaning the bank user and the small business, are actually not aware of what happened in the middle. So let us see hands on how it really works. All the use cases we've been talking at the very beginning of the 
of the of the presentation. Of course, let us try to see how we in Strands we think it can actually work. Let us have a look at the BFM, which is our business financial management that is actually aimed in supporting small business customer in <clears throat> getting hands on their finances. Very simple. Let us have a look at the dashboard of our BFM. The idea is, as we said, it's about data. So the idea is to get a comprehensive overview around what actually is the state of the art of their finances. So getting hands on their cash flows. They want to see, so what is my ability to generate cash? So let us see how it was in the past. But then the next question is, okay, let me see according to the past. How I'm going to behave in the future. So what is going to be my ability to generate cash flow in the very next future? The other thing I want to be able to see is, as we said, is um, invoicing status. So by, first of all, having a clear look on what is the status of my invoices correlated. Is cor I can also have a precise idea of what is going also to be my cash flow as cash flow generation is going to be affected by my ability of getting paid by my customers and the ability of paying effectively the invoices I have to pay. So I also would like to see the invoicing reconciliation. Another use case that we can see here in the demo, in the, in the screen of our demo, is the financial calendar. If the small business customer is able to see both in the past and in the future what are going to be the key events that he has to face from the financial perspective, both in the past and in the future, he can definitely get better decisions just by simply seeing that every third day of the month he has to pay the salaries of his workforces he can take better decision. If he can also see how paying every third day of the month is affecting his cash flow, he's going to even better take um, decisions based on facts. These are simple use cases that has to be made simple thanks to a really simple and effective UI. UI is another thing we really strongly believe and invest in, in strengths as we really think it's crucial to make all of these complex use cases made simple. Another use case we say here is that everything has to be made available via mobile. Mobile is something that is, of course, spreading. So by taking out my mobile phone, seeing that my cash flow are actually doing good, I then can have a look at my financial calendar to see what do I have to pay today, what have I paid, which are the invoices that has to be paid today, which are the ones that are overdue, uh, so that I can easily call my clients in order to remind them that they have to pay me today. This is a very simple use case that has been made simple by connecting the BFM with the third-party accounting system and third-party banking. So what actually is the benefit for the end user? I mean, the user that is going to be adopting the BFM is going to have something that is easy and fast to adopt. I'm going to get hands-on my cash flow forecasting. I'm going to be able to have an holistic view, so banking transactions, but also invoicing transactions. And of course, I can be better financially educated because finance is going to be made easy for me. What is the benefit for a bank by introducing a tool like this? They will be uh, have um, it's going to be made more simple to retain and engage their customer base. It's going to be more easy to cross sell because they will be able to, cr to, to, to better target their product. They will be able to enrich their data set. And these two can be also used to leverage new clients' acquisition. And this was basically it. Many thanks for joining us today and looking forward to see you in the panel discussion later.